hello and welcome back in today's lesson we're going to be looking at turning points um it's um, particularly going to be focused on stationary points because you can have um a maximum point and a minimum point which are stationary points but you can also have a point of inflection which um all together makes it turning points but today we shall be focusing on minimum and maximum points which are stationary points So I've already told you that on on a curve, the diff the gradient, the derivative, the gradient is different at every single point. Um, and differentiation helps us to find the gradient at those points. Um, you can if you if you start off um, on this quadratic curve, for example, it starts off with a negative gradient. Yeah, it starts off with a negative gradient. But notice how the gradient starts getting smaller and starts getting smaller until it gets to this point where there's no gradient anymore it vanishes away and becomes zero uh also if you look notice on this side you have a positive gradient but it starts getting bigger and getting bigger until it gets big to infinity bigger yeah if i were to draw a tangent here at this lowest point here at this point here to find um if i were to draw a tangent there yeah to touch that lowest point there at that point there the y by the x is equal to zero the gradient at that point there would be equal to zero and that's called um, a stationary point because y by the x is equal to zero at that point nothing is happening yeah and for a uh, for this type of uh, curve, yeah, let's use, we're using the quadratic as an example, yeah, then for a positive quadratic, for a positive x squared here, then um, we would have a minimum point. This would be a minimum point. And then for the, um, the same thing happens on this side as well. It starts off with a uh, positive. Notice how it starts getting, I just the wrong thing. Notice how it starts getting smaller, positive, smaller, smaller, smaller until it gets to um, zero. And then it changes up and starts being bigger, negative, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger until bigger infinity. Yeah. And if I were to draw a tangent on this part right here as well, then and if I were to differentiate there, then the y by the x would be equal to zero. At that point, where the y by the x is equal to, the, to zero, it's also a stationary point on the, oh, this is positive x squared, not negative, on the negative x squared. Yeah, at that point where the y by the x is equal to zero is known as a maximum point. So that's the basic information that you need to know. And to crown it all up, yeah, the most important thing for that you have to take away to help you succeed in this lesson is that at stationary points, at stationary points. dy by the x is always equal to zero dy by the x is equal to zero so let's have a look at some examples so this example says uh find the stationary points on the curve y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 4 and determine whether they are minimum or maximum points we've got two things to do here we have got to first of all determine um the coordinates yeah it's got to be the coordinates so you want to have x comma y for any stationary points that are on the on this curve so the first thing that we have to do with this type of problem is to um differentiate so we're going to differentiate y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 
4. Step 1, differentiate uh, the y by the x would then be equal to um, 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. Now we have to remember that at stationary points, divided by the x is always equal to 0. And um, at stationary points, the y by the x equals 0. So we have to make this equal to 0 because that's the y by the x. Therefore, 6x squared minus 6x minus 12 is equal to 0. Uh, just to make it easier to factorize or use the formula. Yeah, you can solve this using the formula. You can solve this using factorizing or any other methods you know to solve quadratic equations. And then um, for this particular one, I can see that I can easily make it a much simpler equation by dividing the whole thing by 6. And if I do that, I'm going to have x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I can factorize this. If I factorize this, this is going to give me x minus 2, x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is either equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 1. Now I have got to... Um, I've got to find the corresponding y uh, coordinates for these two x values that I have, yeah? So I've got the x coordinates. I've got this x here and I've got this x here. I've got to find what y is for those points where x is equal to 2 and y and x is equal to negative 1. So let's continue. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 times 2. I'm substituting back into the original equation. 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 cubed squared um, minus 12 times 3 times 2 plus 4. Yeah? And if I put that into my calculator, that's going to give me negative 16. So one of the points I have is um, 2 comma negative 16. That's one of the points. And the other point, when x equals negative 1, y equals, I'm going to substitute back into the original equation for when x equals negative 1. y equals 2 times negative 1 cube minus 3 times negative 1 squared minus 12 times negative 1 plus 4. And if I put that into my calculator, that's going to give me um, 11. Yeah. So the other point that I have is um, negative 1 comma 11. So I found the two points. Now I have to determine whether they are minimum or maximum points. And to be able to do that, I need to follow those two rules, yeah? I, first of all, I have to find the second derivative. This is my first derivative, yeah? This is my first derivative. Now, to be able to work out whether they are minimum or maximum points, I have to find my second derivative by differentiating the first derivative, okay? Um, if the y by the x is equal to uh, 6x squared minus 6x minus 12, then the square y by the x squared must be equal to 2 times 6 is 12, 12x minus 6, yeah? And once I've got that now, there's two rules I have to follow if I'm doing it using this method. You can also do it using by inspecting the graph. You can also look at it and inspect the graph and know which one is the minimum or maximum point if you're being asked to do it graphically. But this year is the year of the pandemic. We're on the lockdown. So we are most likely going to do it using this method. Okay. Because we're not doing much graphs. Um, now, these are the two important rules that you can use to determine whether it's a minimum or maximum point. If the square y 
by the x squared is greater than zero, it's a minimum point. If the square y by the x squared is less than zero, it's a maximum point. Now we need to substitute to determine whether it's a minimum or maximum point. For the first, um, for this, for this right here, yeah, for oh, for the first point, we have um, for the first point, we have um, the square y uh, when x is equal to 2, the square y by the x squared is equal to uh, 12, 12 here, times 2 minus 6. This is equal to 18. It is greater than 0. Therefore, it is a minimum point. Okay? And for the other point there, uh, when x equals negative 1, then the square y by the x squared, I'm going to substitute into the square y by the x squared, is equal to 12 times negative 1 minus 6. And this would give us... Um, and this would give us negative 18. That means um, it is less than 0. It's is a maximum point so that's how we solve the problem that's how we solve um that problem that type of problem yeah that's how we determine if they are minimum or maximum points you got a different shape you do the first derivative to find your x and y coordinates and when you come to determine whether they are minimum or maximum points you find the second derivative Okay, second derivative, this one right here. Okay, to determine whether they are minimum or maximum points, find it, and then you substitute for the for both points at both points when x is equal to two and when x is equal to negative one. Substitute into the square y by the, square, the x squared, and determine if it is greater than zero or less than zero. Yeah, and make make your conclusion. Um, that's where I'm going to end it for this lesson. If you have any questions, you can ask me in class and I'm very happy to respond to your questions. Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the next one. Bye.